Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and by the time that you have finished watching this video there could well be as many as four new streaming platforms announced. That is not a joke because such is the enthusiasm with which huge media companies are revealing their answers to Netflix. But it's got me and Simon Gallagher thinking, surely this is going to cause a massive headache for TV fans. It used to be simple. It was just that you watched a show live or at a push you recorded it on VHS. Gosh, remember those? Then we add the advent of cable and the explosion in the amount of channels that we could watch at any given time. And beyond that, we got TV on demand, which completely changed the game entirely. Now, for many of us, we thought that this was the game changer that would be as far as things could go. Then the concept of streaming came along. Having access to any show at any time is like a dream come true, right? Well, the problem with streaming, though, is that it literally is impossible for all of these platforms to have every single show on there. Rights make that impossible, so being able to watch Friends at the same time as The Simpsons and Star Trek would usually mean having to have a streaming service and a traditional cable package. Yet now, we're going to have to make even more decisions, as we are on track for a streaming saturation which is going to see major companies lock off their shows to be solely released on their very own platforms. And unless you are Mr. Full-on Moneybags, the question of which streaming service to sub to is going to see some casualties. And we're likely to see the cost that we, the viewer, have to pay increasing ridiculously. No longer is it just going to be Netflix and cable, it's going to be Netflix and Disney Plus and Amazon Prime and Apple TV Plus and so on and so on and so on. So what we've done today is trying to help explain where your favourite shows are going and which services might work best for you going forward. You might not be happy with how much it might set you back, but that is the way of the world, I'm afraid. So let's tune in and get on with this rundown. So say you want to watch The Simpsons and Marvel TV shows. Well, this is the thing. Initially, there was a lot of talks of Disney basically cancelling The Simpsons because it would basically just be such an expensive project for them. But the decision to buy Fox's back catalogue was partly made because of the content that Disney can now add to Disney+. Plus. And in amongst the many, many movies that they picked up and will debut on the platform at launch, they also chose to roll out The Simpsons on there too. Now, for Americans who were using the Hulu service to get their yellow belly family needs, that was completely fine up until now. But Disney has announced that they will be taking it off that site because Disney actually owns a majority share of Hulu now and have said that they are going to put it exclusively on Disney+. Plus. So you have to expect that that is going to be all they wrote for Hulu showing The Simpsons. Disney Plus also has another number of huge hitters. In terms of older shows, the standouts are Marvel ones like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Star Wars shows, plus a host of Marvel animations like the classic 1992 X-Men animations. But other than that, they don't appear to be adding Fox shows at launch, perhaps leaving it to Hulu, which means that probably no Family Guy unless you pick up Hulu. In terms of future favourites, there's also obviously the small matter of Marvel Phase 4 TV shows including Loki, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier and She-Hulk so it's pretty much a must get if you are a Marvel fan. But let's say you want to watch some NBC programming. Now, bit of a history lesson. Hulu basically got into the market and was a kind of a dream team venture of Fox, NBC and Disney all joining up. But with the announcement of NBCU's Peacock service, it looks to see the streaming platform lose all of those NBC shows to that. Also, side note, the name Peacock is quite possibly the lamest name for a streaming platform. But hey-ho, I don't make the decisions there. It was only a matter of time before the company did something with its own big shows and movies, given that they are, well, one of the only giant companies not yet bought by Disney, give it time. So we'll see Parks and Recs move from Netflix over to Peacock, but we'll also see ongoing shows like Brooklyn Nine-Nine also streaming on there, having most recently been on Hulu. And on top of that, the company is looking to reboot classic major shows to add a bit of fanfare to its launch, including Battlestar Galactica, Saved by the Bell, and most intriguingly, The Office. In the case of the latter, they're looking to reboot the series with a new cast. 
This is surely going to mean that older episodes of The Office, US version, will make their way onto Peacock and will likely join 30 Rock, Cheers, Everyone Loves Raymond, Frasier, Saturday Night Live, Will and Grace, King of Queens, and Married with Children. Really went down in quality towards the end there, didn't it? But there we go. So you want to watch Friends, Big Bang Theory and CW shows. Also, some Doctor Who and other UK shows. Where do you go? Friends is still a colossus in terms of streaming, and Warner Brothers chose to use it as the big launch selling point for HBO Max, which probably actually makes a lot of sense. They've actually also just pulled off another masterstroke here by signing up the show designed to be Friends' direct replacement, The Big Bang Theory. And the big money deal that was on the table for this apparently raked in about a billion dollars. It's mad. Warner Brothers HBO Max is designed to bring together content from HBO, Warner Brothers, and The CW primarily. That means that it's gonna be the place for The Larry Sanders Show, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Pretty Little Liars, the upcoming Batwoman, and the entire Arrowverse. Interestingly, another of the biggest selling points of HBO Max could well be the long-standing relationship between HBO and the BBC, which means that we might get to see Doctor Who, The Office UK, Luther, and Top Gear on there. Plus, the service will look to include original programming like the Gossip Girl sequel, plus the Gremlins and Dune spin-off. Ooh. Does anyone like Seinfeld? Well, I guess we're gonna finally get the answer to that question of how relevant it is in the modern day and age because Netflix are banking heavily on this show for its service in the wake of Parks and Rec and Friends being taken from the platform. It is a bold move to get such a giant on the service, but one that seems to be made out of desperation to have something as they watch their stores just being raided by other streaming sites. Now, arguably, they should be focusing on original content as they have been forging ahead with these products in the recent past. Yet, it certainly doesn't hurt to have a very binge-watching show in their ranks. I mean, hell, you could even argue that Netflix losing out in this streaming coup is a good thing as they might be less hasty to cancel smaller shows on a whim. Still, we're still gonna get things like more Stranger Things and 13 More Reasons Why, and for now we'll have the likes of Breaking Bad and Peaky Blinders to round things out. But time is surely ticking. In fact, there's actually a little caveat to this, because news broke recently that Netflix are actually about to introduce an incentive scheme that shows uh, that win awards and break streaming records would get massive bonuses. Its plan seems to be that they're gonna offer a reason for shows to stay on the platform. But one has to question how it's gonna raise the capital if it finds itself struggling down the line. It could be a short-term solution to a long-term problem. Do you wanna watch Lord of the Rings, The Boys, and Carnival Row? Well, good, because I'm gonna talk about them now. These aren't really in the same class as the older iconic shows mentioned elsewhere, but Amazon Prime's approach to TV content has basically been slightly different to other streaming platforms, and that's because of its massive focus on original content. There are older shows on there for now, like uh, 24 and Justified, and a whole host of others, but their catalog will take a hit from the exclusivity clauses attached to other streamers. Now, like Netflix, their offering is likely to be limited by what is left when the other platforms basically take their balls home. But the big selling point for the moment of Amazon Prime, other than the fact that you get pretty quick delivery service sometimes, are the plans for the streaming that's going to go ahead in the future, meaning that we'll see The Boys and Carnival Row in a couple of years, and we're gonna get huge exclusives in the Lord of the Rings TV show that could very well be, and Amazon Prime are definitely banking on it to be, the next Game of Thrones. Do you like Star Trek, good, because this is kind of the dark horse of the race, CBS and their all access platform. Now right now, they're not really on quite the same level as the others because they have existing deals for their shows to air internationally that often precludes them from actually streaming them on their own. But for now, Star Trek Picard is the biggest selling point for all access, while all of CBS original content also airs there first in the US. Now for fans of the UK of Picard, Amazon Prime have been announced as the streaming partners. Star Trek Discovery, meanwhile, stays on Netflix. Eventually, we'll get all CBS all access platforms in the UK, but not yet. And in the US, strangely, it appears that the best bet is to add it on to an existing Amazon Prime subscription for now. This is one to watch. Oh, I like that. Fans of the morning show, see, and for all mankind, give it up, because I'm about to talk 
about Apple TV Plus, which is possibly the most unknown of unknown quantities, but it's going to be leading with original content and will try to beat Disney Plus to the market and also beat them on price and have the added bonus of offering a free year-long subscription to anyone who buys a new iPhone, iPad, Apple TV, Mac, iPod, whatever that is, you junk you chuck in your ears. But like Amazon Prime, Apple TV Plus is a bonus membership system more than a traditional streaming platform. It's designed to incentivize people to buy Apple products and then get a subscription. The focus is on hardware rather than on content. But with so much money to throw around, again, like Amazon, the company can make incredibly high gloss shows with some really great talent, like The Morning Show with Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon or Jason Momoa's C. I mean, they're not really looking to compete with Netflix and the others at least not yet on a syndicated streaming site. But they're the easiest to pick up of all because it's just $4.99. So I guess it's the lowest price point entry. You might as well give it a try. Well, there we go. Got all that information? That's where your favorite shows are likely gonna end up. It is a lot to take in, admittedly, but I hope that it helped and I hope that I've made a bit more sense of this mess. But all you have to worry about now it's just trying to afford it all. And I can't actually help with that. And also trying to find the time to watch it all. Again, I can't also help with that unless you stop watching this and spend more time on Netflix. Oh, please don't do that. I'll miss you. Don't go. If you'd like to follow me, you can do so at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. I hope that you go out there and have a fantastic day. Don't spend all day inside watching TV. Go out and enjoy nature. Pet a dog. Make sure that it's not got mange. Actually, no, do pet it. It probably needs the love. Anyway, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. I just hope you have a bloody good one. As always, you have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.